Today we're going to do mixture separation. We're going to have a flask mixed with three different solids and what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate one of these solids to find its percent composition therefore using the difference method. For example, if you had a flask with a bunch of water and a rock in it and you wanted to find the weight of the, wa of the rock, what you could do is weigh the whole flask and then get rid of all this water and then weigh it again, use the difference method to find the quantity of water that was in this flask. We're going to eliminate one of these physical components in order to find its percent composition. We're going to use a mixture of salt or sodium chloride, silicon dioxide, quartz or sand, and ammonium chloride. Now you're going to have to separate a mixture of all three Ammonium chloride will sublimate when heated. What does sublimation mean? It means to go directly from the solid phase to the gas phase without going through the liquid phase. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Ammonium chloride is toxic when it sublimates. Be careful to do all your work under the hood. We're going to have to heat our mixture to sublimate the ammonium chloride. We're going to have to do this by heating the beaker, but first, Let's learn how to use Bunsen burners. The first step is to ensure that the knob is closed tightly. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So make sure that it is tight and that will prevent gas from flowing at a very quick flow rate through the burner. Next, make sure that it is fully closed here to allow a very small amount of oxygen through or no oxygen. The next step is to plug it in to your gas outlet. Slowly turn on your gas and using this spark maker you will ignite your Bunsen burner. Slowly adjust the bottom knob until you can light your Bunsen burner. You will notice that your mixture begins to sublimate. It may appear as if it's burning, but don't worry, it is just sublimating. We can check to see if the ammonium chloride has been removed by letting it cool and heating it again and cooling it one more time. If there is another decrease in weight, it means that there was still ammonium chloride being removed through the sublimation. The reason you want to heat the walls of the beaker is so that the, as the ammonium chloride sublimates, it does not re-solidify on the walls of the beaker. All that should be left now is silicon dioxide and salt. Now we can dissolve the salt with water, so we will add some, some water and swirl it around in order to dissolve the remaining salt. What we are going to do now is set up a simple filtration device. This will act as our suction when we plug it in to the faucet and turn on the water as the water flow will pull air through here. Now we want to set this here and this is our little filtering device as you'll see it's got little holes and you want to place filter paper in order to stop any, anything that is not dissolved into the filter paper. Make sure to weigh the filter paper in order to know the difference in weight from the pure filter paper and the filter paper with the sand as the salt, since it is dissolved in the water, will go straight through and only the sand will be left on the filter paper. There is no salt remaining now in solid form, it is all dissolved. So you then just pour it through here. If you get a gunk like that, you just add some more distilled water and pour it in. You can do that a couple times in order to clean the little beaker. The filtration device is now pulling air from here out through here and mixing it with the water. So the higher the level of the water, the faster filtration you will have. The filter paper now contains all the silicon dioxide. You will place it on a watch glass and in an oven to dry. 
Once the sand has been dried, or the silicon dioxide, it can be weighed. Remember all that salt water? It's still sitting in here. So what we're going to do is pour it in here, and now what we should have in the evaporating dish is just water and salt, or sodium chloride. All the salt water should be left in the evaporating dish. We can now use the Bunsen burner to heat the dish and evaporate the water.